Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you some simple watercolor landscape techniques that you can use for sketching and also for plein air when you're trying to paint a scene in a short amount of time because of changing light or changing weather. The supplies I'm going to be using today are some watercolor paper. This is a Bao Hong 100% cotton watercolor pad that I ordered online. I'm also going to be using the Arteza 12 Watercolors Premium Half Pans. And specifically, I'm just going to be using the color black. It'll be easier to try out techniques if you're not fighting with colors as well. So I'm going to show you how to do them in black and white. Obviously, you can apply these to any color, um, even multiple colors, of course. But the technique itself will show really well with just the black from this pan and it re-wets quite nicely so it's perfect for quick sketching. If you are interested in purchasing this palette, I am an Arteza affiliate and there's links below that you can follow to purchase this on either the UK or the US Arteza websites. I do get a small commission but it doesn't cost you anything extra. I'm also going to be using a fairly large round brush. You can use an even bigger one than I have here, but this is just a number eight Simply Simmons round. Nice cheap brand that I actually like a lot. You wanna use a more expensive brush, be my guest, um, but my rounds are all cheap and that's how I roll. So we're gonna start off with a night scene. So I'm going to show you on here how to paint a moon with a glow without spending too much time on it. So first you'll want to thin out your watercolor a fair bit. Um, you, you want it to be dark um, but still quite thin. So then take your brush and draw a circle on your page. Just like that, that's gonna be your moon. And then while it's still wet, you're gonna start filling in the area around the moon. Make sure to leave the moon as the paper color, leave it blank, because this is how we're gonna create the effect of a glowing moon. And as you go out, take a little more pigment with each successive uh, ring around your moon until you get to basically a full black because we want to do a night sky. Now I'm going to thin it out a little bit near the bottom of the page because then I'm going to go over top of that with some landscape elements but in the top and the corners over here, you can go as dark as you want. Now, if you're feeling really, um, if you're feeling fast, basically, you can also do this in a smaller set of circles around, and those can be your stars, but you can also just leave them out. Um, it could be, you know, a cloudy night or, they could just be really faint. Uh, you don't have to put them in. You can also put them in afterward with an opaque medium like gouache or acrylic. So, or even gel pen. Gel pen works really well for stars because you just sort of blop them in. So this is our first wash and we're already done and it already looks like a glowing moon. So let this dry and then I will show you what I'm going to do for the foreground to make it have some actual landscape element to it rather than just a sky. Obviously you can leave it just a sky, do what you want, um, but leave it like this, let it dry, and then hit play again and I'll show you how to do the next step. Next up you're going to take again some of your black paint and what I'm going to do is sketch out the vague shape of the landforms that I want here. And I sort of want it to look like there's a river in the middle, perhaps. So 
what I'm going to do to achieve that is leave some areas as that gray tone beneath the moon and that'll look like reflections on water. Basically like that. And then you can fill in the rest of your landform. with some dark washes I'm gonna nudge these reflections over just a little bit and there you have it it's basically done I'm happy with that. It's nice and simple. It's got a source of light. It's got a foreground element. And therefore, it's a fairly successful landscape. <coughs> Oof. All right, and on this bottom section here, I'm going to show you how to paint a mountain or a mountain range. We'll do a few mountains on here. So, when you're painting with mountains, um, you want to get the shape of the peaks quite accurate. If you're if you're working from life, that's what's going to make it look like the landscape you're trying to paint is getting the shape correctly. You don't have to get all the textures correct. That is a very difficult thing to do. Mountains have a lot of texture, a lot of atmospheric perspective and you don't need all of that detail in most paintings. You can see it with your eyes, but you're trying to create the impression of a scene rather than copying exactly what your eyes see, because that's what cameras are for. And even then, cameras, uh, unless you have a very long lens, aren't gonna make the mountains seem as big as you see them, if that makes sense. So anyway, we're gonna start with the shape of the mountains that we want. And I'm using sort of a mid-tone of, of my paint to start. And I'm gonna put them sort of roughly in the center of my page with one big mountain in the center and some smaller ones off to the sides. Something like that. And then taking a clean, wet brush, I'm going to brush along the bottom to sort of fuzz out the bottom of the mountains. And that's gonna give you the appearance of, and that's gonna give you the appearance of that atmospheric perspective. Now, while this is still wet, I'm gonna pick where my light's coming from. I'm gonna say it's coming from this direction and so I'm going to put shadows on the sides of the mountain facing away from that and then doing it while it's still wet means it'll blend out really nicely and you'll get that nice watercolor texture I think when you're painting with watercolor it's important to use that to your advantage and not try to paint like you're painting with some other medium. I think a lot of beginners get hung up on that, you know, making it look detailed and good, whereas watercolor can be really beautiful if you forego the detail and just let it be flowy and natural, wet into wet, like that. So. I like painting this way. This isn't the only way to paint, but hopefully these techniques will help you get to the stage where you like what you're painting as well. So while this is still wet, I'm gonna continue on to the sky. If you're worried about touching your wet paint still, you can wait till it dries, um, but it's not entirely necessary. What I'm gonna do is basically just go around the outer edge and I'm gonna leave the area around the mountains 
fairly white and those will be uh, the clouds. I'm just going along the edges here so when we take off the tape it won't be white against white. Um, it'll have an actual border defining the composition. So you can just play around with that until the sky is about the value that you want it to be. I want it only sort of sort of medium, maybe a little bit of a dark section in there. Yeah, that'll do. All right, so since the bottom of the page is still wet, I'm gonna let all of this dry before we do the foreground, which is gonna be some trees and a little bit of a, a lake perhaps, um, or a grassy field or whatever you feel like. So let this dry and then we will come back and finish it off. To finish this off, I'm gonna take some dark paint again and going to roughly sketch out where I want my landform to be just like I did with the previous painting and then I'm gonna start filling it in and to make trees especially trees at a distance I really only just do this like little lines little up and down lines and that's really all you need to suggest that there's a forest there. Next, I'm gonna take a slightly dry brush, not super dry, but a little bit dry, and I'm gonna scrape it across here to imply a reflective area. This could be a lake or it could be a field with nice shiny grass. And then I'm going to fill in around the edges of that too. I am also going to add another layer in the front of more trees. just to give it some more foreground interest. Like so. So there you have it, two landscapes done using some wet in wet and wet on dry watercolor techniques. Let me know if you found this helpful in any way. And if you're trying this yourself, you can always tag me on Instagram. My handle is at thoughtsupnorth. It's always linked below in my descriptions. I'd love to see what you come up with, what colors you use, stuff like that. And if you have any ideas for tutorials that you'd like to see in the future, leave them in the comments down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, hit the bell notification icon if you feel like it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!